go make me a summer shirt. And I'm going to start with this ruler. And I'm going to make it out of this. And hopefully it'll work out and I hope it'll look good. But we are going to try to do it. get started here I have I'm hoping that I can do this and it looks good man I'll tell you what I just had this here overnight and it feels like sand all over it I hope it don't mess it up all right so Make sure. Yeah. All right. I got it. I'm gonna level it up so that it'll look good. Let's go over just a little bit more. Oh, come on. Okay. Yeah, sand don't work too good. No, oh, come on. There, I made it. All right, now the first thing I want to do is I want to turn this around. So when I sew it, it will, they will be pretty sides already together. So it's only a matter of, to me, it's a matter of, do they have the guts to do it or not? And I think they do. What do you think, David? Well, absolutely. They're, these people are terribly, terribly serious. And uh, they absolutely, I think I misspoke. The sacrifice doesn't have to be done on the mouth, but they believe right there that they have. That's where the temple's got to be. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go down one and a half inches. Maybe if I can see it. Mount of Mount of Olives, yeah. right there. That's yeah. where that temple has to be. Absolutely. Yeah, the temple does to be there, and they want to get rid of the temple. Um, I, I don't, there's people, there's certain fanatics that are main, hardcore about this. This is, um, most people don't realize so, this, but. I'm going to sew these two down, but I need some straps to go with it. So, man, this thing feels so nasty. I need another eraser to go in here. So I'm gonna leave it in here. Yeah. All right, these are the two that I want. Put them there. All right, I am done with this. I can take it back in yonder. All right, I need two straps. And I don't see why these two won't work or two inches ain't they oh, yeah i'm not going to worry about this little bit of white that's showing down here it's right on it so that'll work and then there's me some rug material so now we have this now, uh, we need two pieces that 
is 20 okay I think I'm gonna put this one aside I think I'm gonna want from salvage to salvage so let's work with that hey Rick yeah uh right oh. now Right now, I'll get a uh, copyright. I was just doing this for her. I know it, but right now, I'll get copyright. <laughs> Alright. Let's take this. Oh, I was hoping I'd have enough to make a skirt out of. I don't know how long it will be. But I don't know. I may I may end up still trying to make a skirt. All right. I'll make you a bottle. Side to side, and um, my mind is not working. All right. From here down to here, I'm gonna want it. Oh what? Yeah, about ten inches. So. What's wrong? I was gonna make her a bottle. Uh, that was straight. I was gonna use that one. I don't blame you. All right. I want two of them. That's ten inches. Oh boy. Uh, for a long time right now, there is a strong presence at the temple uh, with the Israeli military. They only allow certain ages to come in there at certain times. I never made one like this. So. We're going to play. Uh -oh. So now I got these two. Oh, the back needs to be bigger than the front. What am I getting there? Yeah, I need the back bigger than the front. Oh, we're going. I don't know. Maybe it's too early in the morning for me to try this. Alright. This will take care of the front. This will take care of the back. And hopefully it will work. I don't know, but we're going to give it a try. So, let's go sewing. Alrighty. So, now. Oh, I got them two messed up. Nope. Gotta. Oh, come on. What'd I do? Alright. Let's see if we can't go on ahead. And we're gonna sew these down. Um, there are, in fact, violence things that happen, and at some of the mosques, the Jews have, you know, killed multiple people in there and taken over that mosque yeah. in those areas. So there's a real threat there to those people. They know that when the Jews go to fight, they go to fight, you know, and they, they know that uh, there are people that are fanatical enough to go in there and, and murder every single one of them, and there, there's no doubt that these people are there. In fact, I've got a video uh, that I'd like for you guys to s just see that kind of just proves the point that I'm trying to make here. Well, even after they occupied the site in 1967, Israeli authorities maintained a policy that Jews should not pray there and that only Muslims can. But that might be changing. And these people are driving that. They belong to various groups that make up what's generally referred to as the Temple Mount Movement. Their ultimate goal is to demolish the mosque, this symbol of Palestinian nationhood, this sacred site to Muslims worldwide, and build a third Jewish temple there. And they're pretty open about their plans. For 34 years, the Temple Institute has been preparing for the rebuilding of the Holy Temple and the renewal of the divine service. They've even got detailed architectural renderings of what the temple would look like. They receive financial support from the Israeli government and charities in the US, Canada, and the UK. In recent years, they've even offered cash rewards to Jews who enter the Al-Aqsa compound or slaughter animals there which was part of Jewish ritual at the original temple. 
For decades, these activists were dismissed by most Israelis and constrained by the government. But that was then. So, a few years ago, this was considered fringe? Zealots, lunatics, peculiar. Today, it's mainstream. Yehuda Glick is one of the movement's most prominent figures, and he served in the Israeli parliament, the Knesset. He's not the only one to reach that office. Ten years ago, there was not a single member of Knesset who ascended the Temple Mount. Today, we have 20 Knesset members. It's become common for government ministers and leaders, and even the Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, to talk about imposing Jewish prayers at Al-Aqsa. Until the early 2000s, the number of Israeli Jews who entered the Al-Aqsa compound was very small, maybe a few dozen a year. But as the Temple Mount movement has moved into the mainstream, that number has recently grown to tens of thousands a year. With the Israeli government increasingly allowing the status quo at Al-Aqsa to change, the worry is that things are going in one direction, towards a situation where Palestinian access to it is restricted even more, the way it has been at another holy site in the wake of a bloody mass killing. Here's that story. Twenty miles south of Jerusalem is the Israeli-occupied city of Hebron, where the prophet Abraham is believed to be buried with members of his family under this building. Abraham is a central figure for both Jews and Muslims. That's why Jews call this site the Cave of the Patriarchs, and Muslims refer to it as the Ibrahimi Mosque. After the occupation began in 1967, Hebron was the first place that Israelis settled in, in violation of international law. Jews and Muslims both prayed at the site, but the situation was volatile. On the morning of February 25, 1994, hundreds of Palestinian Muslims were praying at the Ibrahimi Mosque. An American-born Israeli settler, a reservist in the Israeli army carrying an automatic rifle, entered the mosque, waited for worshippers to kneel down in prayer, and then started shooting. Baruch Goldstein killed 29 people and injured more than 120. One witness described how there were bodies and blood everywhere. Goldstein's massacre ended when the survivors hit him with a fire extinguisher and beat him to death. The injured were rushed to hospitals, which were overwhelmed. And as news of the killing spread, protests broke out across Hebron. Israeli soldiers opened fire, killing more than 20 additional Palestinians in the following days. While we were researching this story, we came across a letter published in the New York Times in 1981. The author notes the difference between Palestinian and Israeli birth rates. The solution, he writes, is for Israel to quote... All right, let's see what we can do about trying to do this. So, what we're going to do is the first one is we're going to take it and we're going to put it on the shoulder and down this way. Oh no, what I do with my pins? Alright, I gotta go find my pins. Alright. Now, I'm gonna, right here at the scene on this, I'm gonna pin this down like that. And now I'm gonna take the other side. Now, I'm watching the way that I am putting this strap because I kind of put it on our sideways. <coughs> and I'm going to put it on this seam and pin it down. Now, we have a strap that we can tie around the neck. Like that. I don't know if it's going to turn out, but we're going to give it a try. Alright. So, I want this one to most definitely go underneath the armpit. So, I'm going to put a pin here to make sure if you feel right in here, you can tell where the armpit is going to be at, which is right here. Okay. And now I'm going to do this side the same way. Okay. And now we got the middle here. Now, right in here, I'm going to want to put a... Oh, that's going to have to be a little bit longer. 
Okay, let's see what we can do. Because that's just too short. I mean, I need to make it go down further. Okay, let's go down to right about there. All right, where's the pin at? Oh, I already sent took it out. All right, right about there. Or else I didn't put one in one or the other. All right, wait, what? Don't do that. Don't go around. All right, so we are going to take it down. Ooh, I like that better. Come on. All right. Man, it's too far down. Okay, right there. Oh, come on. Alright. Now. Oh, but yeah. That is more what I want right there. Alright. Now, my question is, if I take this in half, will it work? Yes. Yes. All right. So we're going to take this apart. Right here. Okay. Now. We are going to put this down. And we are going to go. Come on. Oh, let's see. A half an inch is way too big. Um, let me go get my other thing. Alright, I got this little ruler here. I hope you can see it. I'm going to go this side over. And two inches down. Or should I go one and a half? I think one and a half will work just fine. Okay. Oh, you're such a brat. I knew she didn't give a good reason. What? What did you say to you? You think you're being disrespectful. All right. There we go. All right, let's do both of them. So we'll stop it there, but the point of, that I wanted you to see in this video is that there's a lot more volatile situations going on in that area than what people may think. Um, and of course, obviously in the news now, there's so much going on already to think that there's actually more going on uh, deep within the belly of this, you know, this center is, is mind-blowing because obviously we have the Palestinian thing going on, now we have with Iran going on, we have basically Israel is being tortured on all sides and maybe they're part of the torture that they're doing on all sides but it's just a hodgepodge of just fumes getting ready to just blow and my that's what i see anyway and of course i'm nobody all right now let's see what we got here i wish i could quit it from going over that makes it harder. Alright. We'll go there. I'm not there, but this is the plan, right? We Ivor Pike's three world wars. This is the plan, this three world war, the Zionist versus the Muslims. And how can they kick it off in a better way, David? I don't know. Alright, now we got it right here. I'm going to take and pin this down in three different places all right now all right now I'm going to take and I'm going to sew this down right here in a V shape 
so that uh, we'll have this closed up and we don't have to worry about anything showing. All right. We have this sewed down. <coughs> and I need to cut the... Oh, where is my scissors? Now, this will work. All the way around it. Yeah, yes. Alright, let's pin it. I'm going to pin it right up here. Pin it right up here. Well, and I think what we need to keep in mind is that there are people that want to instigate World War III. They want to see the Dome of the Mosque destroyed because in their belief, their Messiah can't come until the temple is built there. So, All right, this time I can put you over here because I put it on a table to make it higher. All right, now I have my thing here. And I'm going to want it at an inch. Now I have this folded in half, and I and I want to make it to where I can take it from here down. And I'm going to use this as my the middle of it. And I want to put one here. Uh, nope, I might go a little bit more over one on this side yet yeah. that will work if I can take it and line it up there we go I'm gonna want that one here and then I'm gonna want another one over here I mean these people are open about it they want World War three yeah. and it, when we think about who else was talking about World War III being propagated with the conflict between the Zionists and the Muslims? This is the Illuminati agenda. Yeah. And it becomes more and more clear as you see a lot of people, like you were saying earlier, that of a lot of the Christians, a lot of the Zionists in general, because you don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. There's a lot of Zionists that aren't Jews. They're totally for the Zionist state that are actually donated to this thing. And, and maybe they don't understand what they're propagating but what they're actually propagating is a mass casualty scenario that I, in, in my opinion i don't think it's going to go unnoticed i don't think it's going to go without some kind of repercussion because there's people that are already empowered to go on to the temple mount and this article here i found this article you can look up this article in 2024 this was just a few days ago 13 people detained near Jerusalem's Temple Mount with lambs and goats they intended to sacrifice in a biblical Passover ritual. And so they already have people in the in the video we showed before you heard the lady saying that they're actually paying people to try to get in there and make it happen. So this the thing is that a lot of people won't enter there. They believe that they're it's very scary for them to enter into these situations uh, or into the holy ground, right? They believe that it's holy ground and they haven't been consecrated. They haven't received Alrighty, I have the front sewed on, and I feel a pin. I bet you I sewed right over top of it. Yep, I sure did. Well, and that's just the way life goes. Alright, so now I need to cut off the sides that uh, that are right here. So what I'm going to do is take my three and a half and I'm going to cut down to make it even with this. The, the ashes from the red heifer in order to enter the temple mound. And I think the fear is that once they feel empowered, once they feel to where they are now clean to enter into the temple mound, they actually will. Oh, 
I am liking it. I am liking it. I really am liking it. All right. Now, we have to work on the back right here. And we have this one. Now, uh, I don't have... Okay, let's see what we got here. All right. I want to take and cut down oh, come on two inches right here down it now I have this piece which I am going to go in the half of it <coughs> and I'm going to take this half and I'm going to sew down it and when they do they've never all entered there like most of the people that are you know religious fanatics etc they haven't entered it because they believe that it's holy ground they cannot enter without being uh, pure and so this is a uh, very real fear that the people of Jordan who trench Jordan and the people of Pac you know uh, Palestine the people of all different places fear because Palestine's been at odds with the Jews right there in that temple many times they've had oh, battles yeah. in there oh yeah um, read a couple of scriptures here to just give some biblical clarity here uh, Hebrews 10 and 4 says for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats could, should take away sins. Uh, in verse 10 of Hebrews 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, a once for all sacrifice for cleansing and purification and forgiveness. And in verse 11 it says, and every high priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away right. sins. I had Rick, and I hope you can see it, measure from here over to here. And it is 21 and like an eighth. So, I'm gonna want a piece of uh, elastic less than that to put there in the middle and I really think uh, 18 is good enough to put down in there to make it uh, to make it work so now let's see what we got here <coughs> I'm getting way too much stuff on this counter here all right, right here it is. So I'm going to put the elastic in here. And I wish I could tell how to do the half. It is absolute biblical insanity to in any way promote or encourage a return to animal sacrifice. You can understand it a Jew wanting to do that that yeah. rejected Christ but what's amazing to me is so many Christians that will jump on this bandwagon and they think that if they do this Jesus will return it's like the father up in heaven oh they've sacrificed the cow now okay Jesus you can go I mean it, yeah. it's it's absolute uh, biblical insanity and it's it is just and literally when the one fellow said that that cow could start World War Three, it's very, very possible. Yeah, they actually, according to the the maker of the documentary, he asked to be have his face removed from that. He's the one that actually supplied the cows for Israel. That guy that was talking, uh, I know you know that, but he was removed. They they asked to be removed from the video. I don't think they removed him, obviously, but didn't look like it. Yeah, he asked. He has to be removed. Alright, I have my two pins right here and I have them I have it folded in half. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another pin and I'm gonna mark my middle right here. 
and make sure I got it really good so it won't come loose. Now, what I'm going to do is take this one and continue on down the side and I'm going to sew it right here and then I'm going to take this half and I'm going to bring it down and sew it down there.